What's up YouTube? My name is Chad. This is the Wisco Boater Channel and uh, today I'm going to work on getting a uh, uh, sort of a cover support for the dinghy made and I was hoping to have an update on the uh, sale of Clifford at this point but uh, we're not quite there yet but by the time this video comes out on YouTube uh, likely will be wrapped up and uh, on to its new owner but uh, you'll probably know that before this video posts anyway, so check that video out, see how things went. Um, the cover for the dinghy doesn't have any support. And what happens, um, what happens is when they sit for, you know, a week or two at a time between visits to the boat with, no, with a cover on it, if it rains, uh, the cover will sag and They'll have water to bail when you get back up to the boat. So I'm hoping that I can figure out uh, some way to lightly support the inside of the cover. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas. Uh, I just woke up this morning thinking about this and it's not something I thought of doing before. Just uh, just came to my mind and I thought, well, that sounds like a good Sunday project. So I'm going out to the storage unit to pick up the trailer with the dinghy on it cover is not a travel cover so you can't really go blasting down the highway with uh, with the cover on it it'll either damage the straps or you'll lose the cover or could could even damage the boat so don't normally um, move the, the boat with the cover on it but my storage unit's only about two and a half miles away from the house and very lightly traveled road uh, so I don't have to go 55. Should be able to go fairly, uh, fairly slow and get it back to the house safely. But let's get it pulled out of the storage unit and take it back home so we can start working on this project. The cover here is uh, wrapped around the back sides of the tubes and then strapped over. And again, this is not a travel cover. It's got decent elastic, but it just flops all over the place. So what I'm going to do is build a little bit of an arc in the center there to uh, keep water to uh, keep water shedding off the cover when it rains. So back to the garage. Dinghy's back in the garage, and I, I don't think that I showed this on any videos before, but I built these uh, uh, bunks for the dinghy to uh, sit on while I transport it up to Sturgeon Bay at some point. Um, I don't know exactly when that's going to be because at this point we're still waiting to get uh, the sale of Clifford closed, and then I have to find a new boat. And uh, so this isn't going to go up north until, until that happens. But... I went ahead and built these bunks. I didn't didn't make a video of them. They're very simple. Just uh, wood I had laying around. Cut an angle on each of those, each side, and screwed them in place. Also, uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, seeping. Um, uh, 5200. So those are good and strong. And then for the front, I just have a board down here with bunk carpeting on it for the keel to rest on. So I'll get this thing unstrapped and then uh, try and figure out exactly how I'm going to do this. Neighbor came over, helped me get the motor in place. And uh, as high as that sticks up, I might, I'll might i probably be able to use the motor as basically the rear support for the cover. I'm hoping that the cover will actually fit over the motor decently. And then um, it, this might be easier than I thought. Um, just do one support in the front. My original thought was to take this uh, take this old bimini top frame that I have, cut it down real real narrow, and just basically real narrow and real short, and just make a 
a, a bimini top type of, of frame underneath to support it. But I actually don't think I'm gonna have to do that. So let's see how the cover fits. plenty of slack left in the front of the cover so I think um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna rethink this just a little bit here and figure out um, basically just a strut strut mount off the front bench seat just to give it some some height so the rain just washes off of both sides so all right well, I'll figure this out and then I'll show you what I do I think I have a good idea um, I have this this uh, spare base mount for like a grill or a table or something. Um, and I also have these aluminum tubes that came off of, these came off of another boat that I parted out. And this is just one of those things that I throw over there in my, my pile of tubing. Cause you never know when something like this might come in handy. And I think today might be the day for this. So, um, this doesn't fit in the hole because there's threads. This, is, this base is obviously for a threaded um, post for a table or a grill. But I do have a hole saw that is the exact same size diameter as that. So, I need to shave off the threads. So, why does my hand look so nasty and dirty? weird <laughs> squirrel um anyway <laughs> so my idea here is and i don't know if it's a good one or not but i'm going to put this in the drill press and see if i can shave those threads away to get that tube to fit and then with the tube fit then i will mount this base to a board which then will just get strapped onto the front bench in the dinghy and i gotta figure out the height and then some way to obviously protect the canvas um, so the canvas doesn't cut through um, resting on the on the post, but this is the uh, this is the idea I'm going to try. I'm fairly certain this is going to make a really bad noise. So eye protection, hearing protection, a little bit of cutting oil. See what happens. <laughs> Love the smell of cutting oil in the morning. Now with the threads gone, let's see how she fits. Perfect. Nice and flush with the bottom. And that I think is going to be our winner. So I need to cut a board to mount the base to and then this is just going to sit in that in that slot there it's it's going to move a little bit if it get if it gets real windy but i don't think it's going to fall there's no way for it to fall over but we'll test it and see but this worked out great never know what you're gonna use leftover parts for but this is a good use for this one okay i've got my board cut and I've got pilot holes drilled for the six screws that I'll use to mount the base. So we'll line it up. Uh, this board is 
23 inches. We've got eight inches on either side, so should be plenty of support with it being strapped to the, um, the front bench seat. And um, again, this is all just stuff I have on hand here. It's, I didn't go out and buy anything um, to make this. So um, I've got um, either three quarter inch or one inch screws here. Uh, with a Hellman washer just to give me a little extra height on the screw so it doesn't go all the way through the board. It was really close, so I um, just wanted to get a little extra space, so I'm going to use Hellman washers to keep them lifted up a little bit higher. And the flat blade screws I hate, but it's all I had for the correct length. So I'm not going to tighten everything up yet get things started and I just realized I only brought four screws over so I need to go get two more Eight flat, flat head screws. All right, let me go get some more screws. We'll tighten these down. Got all six screws tightened down. They don't pass through on the back side. That would be very bad because that will scratch the crap out of the bench seat. So. We're pulling right there. And there we have the base mount for it. There we go. Okay, now I gotta figure out what to do with the top part here and also the actual height that I need. Um, I'm guessing about 20 inches, but I'm gonna put a piece of cloth over the top of this um, just to see where it where it's at at its current height. I don't know how tall this thing is, 24 inches or so maybe. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. Well, that's how I envision it sitting. And then I'll just, I'll strap it. Um, I don't know what I'll use to strap it yet. All my straps are way too long for this, but I'll figure out a way to strap it to the bench seat. And you can see it's probably pretty too tall at this point, but let's see, uh, see what it looks like. I'll put something over the top there and uh, or we'll just see how much we need to cut off of this tube. Shop rag will do the trick. Okay, so I'm probably going to cut off a good five or six inches from the top because I, I'm nearly certain that that's going to have to be done. And if I cut too short, I'll, whatever I put on top of it, I'll make up with the space if something needs to make it a little bit taller. But uh, I think I'll cut six inches off and we'll see where we're at. Got the pipe uh, clamped in the vise here. Should be a pretty easy cut. I'll file down the inside here just to get rid of sharp burrs. I don't cut myself. And we'll, we'll uh, retest it. I think we have a winner here at that height. Uh, it's not strapped down, so there's, it's still loose. And I got to figure out how to, what I'm going to do to protect the canvas. But that height looks just about right. Uh, just a little bit taller than the motor. So I'll have a little bit of a wash off to the back. And then each side will... 
uh, wash off as well. So. And there's still plenty of slack in the cover to cinch it down nice and tight. So, all right, next part is figuring out how to protect the canvas. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do to uh, remedy that yet, but uh, I'll figure something out. So I'll be back when I know what I'm doing. And these stupid tennis balls are going bye-bye. I bought a new laser garage uh, parking tool that's gonna mount on the ceiling. So I hate these stupid tennis balls. Well, again, uh, just another bag of stuff that I have on hand of uh, caps. I bought these for some reason some time ago, and I have a two inch uh, cap. So, put that there. Maybe this won't work and now my neighbor's mowing so uh, shoot all right so this is try number two new cap um, i used my dremel with a uh, grinding stone to create a little bit of a bevel in here and then i put a little bit of oil on the cap so let's see if this works I do believe that will work. Nice uh, plastic top to the tube. The canvas will slide on this. No sharp edges, it's not gonna cut anything. So I think that'll work. Now, strap it down and give it the actual final test. These are the straps I'm gonna try and use. Um, I, I don't like these these kind of straps for tying down stuff on trailers. So um, I think it'll work just fine for this though. So we'll hook the two um, together underneath. And then well, if they stay together, pull them tight. And we don't need, we don't need these to be like super tight. All we need to do is make sure that it's not gonna tip over one way or the other. So it's not like we have to ratchet these down. So I think that'll work just fine. Um, I can't find my other one. I got a couple of these somewhere, but that's, uh, I think that'll work just fine. That's gonna keep it from, it's gonna keep it from tipping forward and, and backwards. And there's gonna be a little bit of pressure down from the, can, the uh, canvas to the cover being uh, strap tight to the boat so I think that'll work just fine it does need another strap obviously because it can move this way so we need another strap and uh, put the cover on for real see how it looks all right well we've had success in building the uh, the stand for the cover to keep rain from pooling when the cover is on Let's see if I can show you on the inside here what it actually looks like in place So the board strapped to the front bench with the pole sticking up will keep rain off. I think I'll probably put like a plastic bowl or even a, a plastic wine glass or something over the top of the post so that the uh, edges are a little bit more round. But the uh, project overall is a success. I'm really happy with the outcome and I um, hope this helped you gather some ideas to uh, keep rain from pooling on your dinghy cover as well. So thanks for watching this episode of the Wisco Boater Channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, send me some comments if you'd like to. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one or any other boat video that I do, hit that notification bell. 
We'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.